Clara, thank you for the opportunity to present the past and the present of my country to you and also look together a bit um, to the future. So where is this future? <laughs> Somebody forgot to, to give me the future. So anyway, um, on the year 2018, we celebrate uh, 100 years of our state, although we were occupied by the Soviet Union for more than uh, 50 years. We've been enjoying uh, quite a ride since our re-independence re from uh, 1991. Our GDP has risen seven times, and some theorize that a third of it might be because we used from the beginning different e-governance um, solutions to reform our country. So if somebody still doesn't know where Estonia is, so geographically, we are located in the Nordics, in the shores of uh, Baltic Sea. We have a long uh, coastline, which is similar to, uh, similar to Greece. Half of the territory is covered with forests, so we have clean nature, as the Greece have too. Through all these years, we've been honored to be taken a member of all the prestigious unions, so as EU, so as Eurozone, so as OECD, and the different, different others, of course, NATO. And um, the last and the most, let's say, fastest development have been during the last 15 years. So if we imagine how the Greece would look like in 2030, it's still 14 years, and we have the experience, and we've done a lot of mistakes. So if you uh, don't do any mistakes, I think that you could develop even faster, and uh, the future of Greece is definitely decided yet. So did anybody know that the Skype as a solution was invented in Estonia? Who knows? Who knew? Oh, just a few. And, um, and the transferwise, which is peer-to-peer -peer, uh, banking, uh, or let's say uh, money, money exchange platform. We have many global startups founded in Estonia already. So about the state, about the services, and about redefining governance. And it's all about governance. It's not about technology. Technology is just one thing that has to be combined with the political will to do the governmental reforms to offer better services to our citizens, which we sometimes consider as our clients in a positive mean, and we usually, um, com uh, usually uh, compare each other uh, with telecoms and with banks where is a big competition, and every bank or telecom must do everything to keep their clients. So, so we basically feel that, as a state, we must do everything that to keep our citizens and to invite others to Estonia as well. So it's easy. Almost everything can be done digitally in Estonia, just unless marrying and divorce and selling your house. I don't know why is that not digital yet, but probably some procedural matters and um, something to, 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 to remember. And it's everything, everything is 24-7, so you don't have to wait until Monday or Wednesday where some kind of public administration official uh, comes to work and now you can declare your taxes. It takes approximately hour to a few to set up a legally functioning company in Estonia. So, and you can do it on your own in internet. You don't need a loyal uh, lawyer or accountant or anybody else to, uh, to, to help you. It takes three minutes to declare your taxes. I don't know whether in some countries or how it is in Greece, but in some countries you must take a week off, hire a lawyer and hire an accountant to do your taxes. And it was uh, introduced in, in intro before as well. We were the first country to introduce e-voting and still the only one who does it. So last uh, parliamentary elections that we held uh, last spring, uh, over 30% of the voters voted uh, over internet. So they were abroad in other countries as well, and also they were staying at home to do something better instead of going to the uh, polling stations. And it all, all saves 
quite a lot of different things. So does anybody know what are the two main things that people are always lacking of? This is time, one, and money, second. Through this e-governance, we save people's time and we save people's money. We estimate that we save 2% of GDP each year by signing anything and everything digitally. At the same time, a bit more than 2% is the um, money that we spend on our national defense. And we are a member of NATO, so 2% of GDP is this uh, thing that we have agreed on. Um, we have e-healthcare system, which we use very much, and it has helped us to make uh, the queues shorter, at, at least one-third shorter. And, of course, we've been seen abroad as well, if we talk about different e solutions that we have uh, developed. It's often asked, how, it, how, is, how is all that possible? Did you have the young generation in politics or something, something else? I think that this is the collaboration between different sectors, public sector, private sector, NGOs, everybody. It all has to come together, then you will achieve everything. So the killer applications which led people to use different these solutions was founded by private sector at first time. Then the state came with, uh, with them and, um, and developed uh, develop these things uh, further. It's often asked as well, what's the main industry in Estonia? And actually, I don't have a good answer because there is none. Machine, uh, machine, machinery and forestry, they are big sectors, also IT, ICT sector, but uh, we don't have any dominant sector, like in some countries there is tourism or, or something else. And I think that this is a strength and a weakness at the same time, because we are not depending on one sector alone. We don't have to tailor-made the tax systems for, for, for some specific sector. We have flat tax for everybody, but we um, do it as easy as possible for every company, for every citizen to, uh, to come to Estonia, to start their business in Estonia. It's all based on mandatory e-identity. Without it, if it would be voluntary, it, it wouldn't work. So, so just a suge suggestion for, for the government officials, if there is any in the audience, that please do mandatory e-identity for everybody. Don't worry, if we started, we didn't have anything else to do than to clean our car's windows during the winter because uh, there were no services, but we still did it. It's all based on X-Road, so this X-Road is behind the e-identity. So this is the highway, and um, all the services run on the highway and the, and the subsidiaries. And we um, right now have more than, um, more than 2,500 different services provided by the state and, uh, and the government. Of course, nothing is perfect, nobody is perfect, the technology is never perfect, but uh, we always have to look uh, in right balance these uh, data protection and cyber threats. As is this our talk. So, we, are, we have all heard about disruptive uh, private companies. But um, can only companies be disruptive? The answer is no, the states can do. So as we know how to design these services, as we know how to uh, make things good for people to, to use it the easier way and to get more benefits, then we thought that we must start with our own a governmental startup, and this is called e-residency. So any one of you can become e-resident of Estonia. We already have 13,000 e-residents from uh, 135 different countries. This is the picture that every businessman in the room should look very carefully. This is the future in six years' time. And we looked at that picture and we thought that we should do something differently. So we established the e-residency, which, which is the access to all of those e-services that we provide to our own citizens. It's not a document, it's not a citizenship, but it's an access to all the e-services that we provide to our own citizens. So this is the world. There is no single good place for everything. And if we um, uh, 
give e-residencies for, for everybody, wherever they are. They can be connected to each other, open a bank account, do transactions, do everything. So, so that's, the, that's the benefit. And it gives you a location, independence, and, and everything else. So, so that's, that will be the future. This is a status service. This is Estonia in the future. If we know Uber, if we know Facebook, which is one of them is a taxi company with no cars, um, Airbnb is a um, real estate company with no real estate, so we will be probably the country with the biggest number of uh, residents with only 1.3 million physical residents. And by the way, talking about Uber, talking about sharing economy, if in most of the countries people would like to ban these services or turn off the internet, we decided that we will welcome these, uh, these services to Estonia. So I introduced the bill to the parliament to make ride sharing as such legal in Estonia. And it's, uh, it's done very well. Even, um, even more, we started um, a cooperation with the tax board of Estonia. So every cent that an Uber driver earns in Estonia, uh, from every cent that Uber driver earns in Estonia, all the taxes will be paid, and all the taxes will be paid automatically. So if the tax is an issue, for example, in Athens, where Uber also is, is active, then uh, please call us. We will give you the same tax solution or even collect the taxes for you and pay it out every Monday or Tuesday or wherever you like. So this is uh, the Estonian story in brief. It could also become a Cree story, a European story. Could you imagine if everybody in the EU would save 2% of GDP by signing anything and everything digitally? And this is just the beginning. We, if we would have fifth freedom, uh, next to the other four that we have in the single market in the EU at the moment, there's a free movement of data. I, will th I think that it would, it would benefit us all. So, thank you, Evaristopoli.